This video will look at issues surrounding technology. So there's a number of different issues surrounding technology and these issues can be put into categories such as ethical, legal, privacy, environmental and cultural. And in this video we'll explore examples of a range of issues um, and it needs to be noted that most issues involving technology encompass a mixture of these different categories. So what do these categories actually mean? Well, privacy is discussing how technology affects the privacy of our data and our own identity. Ethical is discussing what's morally right and morally wrong. Legal is discussing what's right and wrong in the eyes of the law. Cultural is discussing how ethnic groups, countries, religions affect and are affected by technology. And environmental is discussing how technology impacts the environment and how environmental issues affect technological progress. Now, as we take a look at a number of these different issues, it's important that we view these issues through the eyes of various stakeholders because you need to look at all sides to provide a balanced viewpoint on whether these issues are positive or negative and come to your own conclusions. This is important very important for your GCSE because in the GCSE you're going to be asked some essay based questions and you need to be able to discuss all sides and weigh up um, your own opinions based on evidence that you provide. So a stakeholder is a person or a group who's affected by an issue. For example when discussing issues related to illegally downloading music there will be several stakeholders involved. You'd have the individual who's downloading the music and they'll be breaking the law and you could argue that they are being unethical. The music company, well, they're going to lose out on revenue and governments are involved as well because they will be expected to prevent the ability to download illegally. This will be difficult if the site is hosted outside of their authority. So you will be expected to discuss a variety of issues in your exam and your discussions need to be from all sides. So you will identify the stakeholders and work out how they are affected by the issue. So if we look at technology and the environment, technology often it will be run through electricity and how do we get our electricity well that's the the really important um, factor so it's fine as long as the methods of electricity production aren't harmful to the environment but unfortunately most electricity is still being created from the burning of fossil fuels um, in addition to this manufacturers of com uh, manufacturers of components co uh, produce waste products and that can adversely affect the environment and technology developers ra really rapidly and if you think about it you know people might get a mobile phone and then a few years later it will be obsolete and they'll just get rid of the phone they'll throw it away and that will go to um, landfill if not recycled properly and that will cause further environmental harm now due to ethical and legal expectations there's been a number of changes which have led to the development of greener technologies which are more efficient and therefore require less en electricity um, Social expectations and legislation have led to progress in how waste is dealt with. Recycling is now the norm, for example. So when we're discussing technology and the environment, there's lots of different sides that we could um, take a look at. So let's just have a look at some stakeholders' views. Now, manufacturers and inventors, they've got a desire to innovate and progress technology so that it is more efficient, partly due to social expectation pressures, but also due to government legislation. The general population, we love our technology, and we're but we're worried about the demand for electricity um, and how it's leading to the burning of more fossil fuels. And as a result, it's leading to global warming, which will adversely affect our futures. The government, we rely on our technology as a nation, but worry about global warming. We need to find a balance between encouraging technological development and reducing the damaging effects of manufacturing, waste and electricity production. So here you've got your stakeholders and there's huge um, differences in, in their views and, and uh, from, the, from where they're standing. So you need to be able to look at the different stakeholders, understand their viewpoints to form a coherent and balanced argument to any essay based question that you are given in your exam. Now there's loads of other things that we could talk about here. Um, you know, these are just examples and that's going to be the case in a lot of other issues that we discuss over the next few minutes. So please don't think of these as, as the only correct answers, the only things you can talk about. These are just things to get you thinking. Okay, erosion of privacy. 
So in today's uh, society, humans are using social media. They're forced to provide personal information to government systems, doctors, the police. And it's often for good reasons. You know, you want, if you go to the doctor, you want them to know about your medical history so they can provide you with the right care. But the problem is that when you put all these systems together, um, you know, there's a fairly complete picture about um, each individual. And, you know, eth ethically, is it right that your privacy could be exposed in this way? So monitoring humans so that um, those who pose threats to society can be identified is a good thing. You know, we often the police, they do want to keep um, in close um, well, tracking um, certain individuals, um, but often the way that they would do that is by making sure that they're monitoring uh, society as a whole. And only when they actually have reason to um, perhaps investigate certain people, um, then obviously that information's there. And in a way, it could keep us um, safer as a nation. However, if all this information gets into the wrong hands, it could cause terrible consequences. Identity theft can cause individuals to lose their savings, homes, be accused of crimes that they didn't commit. So it's got to be carefully treated. All of this data has to be very carefully handled. Um, and in addition to the above, advertising companies can now easily collect information about individuals, often without their knowledge, and then target them with adverts. And this can be very annoying. So, general population. Our privacy is no longer private. Our complete identity can be pieced together through online services. On a positive note, this knowledge can keep us safe as threats can be better monitored. Government. There is a huge amount of pressure on us to protect our citizens, and this is often done through intelligence and surveillance. However, there is social unrest with the way in which our methods are eroding the privacy of our citizens. Do we trust our citizens, or do we monitor to, in order to keep them safe? criminals. Greater monitoring makes it harder for us to carry out our illegal operations and is sending us more underground, forcing us to develop new ways to avoid surveillance. They can't stop us, they can just make it harder for us. So another issue is the digital divide. So there are parts of the UK with fast broadband, there's other parts which have slow or no broadband at all. And this does cause big issues. Productivity nowadays is linked with communication speed. You know, if you can get more work done and that's attained you can attain greater profits with faster broadband speeds. So if half the country are slower broadbands, this can cause an unfair advantage to certain organisations over others. And this di digital divide is seen between countries too. So for those countries with low IT literacy levels and skills, they're less likely to be able to compete in the modern world, world thus worsening the divide further. This clearly is a cultural issue with some cultures who may not be so technologi uh, technology immersive suffering over time. Advantage countries will use technology to further develop, so medical research, transportation, education, further widening the gap. So the advantaged might say that our businesses are thriving due to fast communication speeds. We can get more work done more quickly due to our fast internet speeds. Due to our education, using a, a computer is second nature, and as a result, we have greater prospects in life. Due to our country being technologically advanced, our healthcare, security, transportation are all advanced, leading to a happy way of life. The disadvantaged may have a different view. Our internet speeds are slow and as a result we are not productive as other similar companies. We are struggling to compete with them. Our education system has little money or our school has only one computer. It's difficult for all students to develop their ICT skills which may stifle our job prospects in life. Our country is poor and cannot invest in technology like other countries. Many of our services are quite limited and this affects our daily life adversely. So mobile technology is another issue that um, there's a lot to talk about. So the last several years have seen advancements in mobile technology. It's led to a range of advantages and disadvantages to both employers and employees. So with mobile technology, workers can be more productive. They no longer need to be at the office to work. They could work whilst on the move or when at home. And this is great for employers as their workforce can be more productive. Employees may also feel the benefits of being more flexible with their working hours. But a major negative with all this mobile technology is that workers may struggle to switch off from work, which can adversely affect their home and their work-life balance. As mobile, te uh, mobile devices are much easier to lose or be stolen, and if there's sensitive information on these devices, this can be a major problem for organisations. The company may be in breach of the Data Protection Act. And furthermore, being connected 24-7 can lead to addiction too, which can again adversely affect lives. So the stakeholders, if we look at workers, 
I like being connected with mobile technology as it gives me freedom to choose my own working hours. This actually reduces my stress levels. Whereas others might say I struggle with the fact that I have mobile technology as I find I can never switch off from work and from the digital world. This leads me to struggle with my home work, home work life balance. I sometimes find myself checking my work emails in the middle of the night. And if we look at views from companies, we love it now that our workers of mobile technology because they are always connected. We have seen productivity rates increase, which has led to a rise in our profits. We're having to support our workers now with a lot more stress, which is obviously a negative. And another, we are also dealing with more instances of sensitive company information getting into the wrong hands as people are storing company data on their mobile devices and then misplacing their devices without proper security. We hope it doesn't ever fall into the wrong hands. So social media has boomed in recent years. And again, there's a lot to talk about social media, lots of issues relating to social media. So recent years have seen a rise in social media. It's created a number of issues. On a positive note, people are much more connected these days and as a result are able to share information and ideas with ease. It's also led to a greater democracy in some countries where state secrets have been exposed, leading to societies demanding better treatment and more of a say in how the countries are run. Social media has also led to some negative issues such as trolling, cyberbullying and other forms of online abuse. So if we think about some stakeholders' views here, if you look at society, I love social media. I can connect to my friends. I can share knowledge and ideas with them. I've been able to learn about some hidden truths about how my country is run, which has led me to fighting for change in how our country is run. Social media has ruined my life. Cyberbullying and trolling has made my life unbearable. So different viewpoints there from society. Now let's have a look at companies. Social media allows us to check up on workers and see if, our, if a prospective prospective worker is right for our job. Social media has caused issues for our company as one person decided to post about a negative experience they had with us. It went viral and we're now trying to rebuild trust with our customers. Again, different viewpoints there from different stakeholders. Computer technology can also cause um, a lot of health issues. Uh, so with a great dependency on computers, people are spending far more time at a computer and as a result aren't being as active. And this is leading to um, a number of problems. For example, uh, people are becoming more obese because they're doing less exercise, which in turn is greatly increasing the number and severity of health problems for the individuals. And that puts added pressure on the NHS. Another health issue from repeated use of a computer is backache and repetitive strain injury. And addiction can result from overuse of computers, for example, online betting and gaming. Addiction can adversely affect lives in a number of ways. There are some positives, though, from technology. For example, um, there is now uh, exercise um, monitoring uh, devices, for example, Fitbit. Uh, which will look at your heart rate over time. Um, it may well be able to highlight um, any some problems that you might be getting. Sometimes people's heart rate increase, their, their resting heart rate increases as they're getting ill, um, which might just give some signs to people that they need to um, get some, some help medically. Um, there's 3D printers that are printing, um, 3D printing bones, uh, which is helping for lots of surgical um, situations. So stakeholders view society due to the demands from my job. I'm forced to work at a computer for much of the day and this is leading to health problems. I have terrible backache RSI and I'm putting on weight. I find that I can't switch off from the digital world. I'm addicted to my mobile phone, which is causing me to being detached from the real world. I don't eat or sleep properly anymore and I've fallen out with my friends. So the government and the NHS. We're spending far more of our budget dealing with the health problems relating to obesity. I wish people looked after themselves better, then we would be under far less pressure as a health service. We, the government, need to educate society on healthy living to ensure that our society's health improves, reducing the strain on the health service. So let's have a look at changing our cultures, changing cultures from technology. So computer technology has been responsible for a change in our culture over the last few years. 20 years ago, the term selfies, viral videos, blogging were pretty much unheard of, but now they're part of our language and to some degree part of our behavior. Society seems to be forever trying to get the perfect selfie. We even have um, an invention to help us take them, the selfie stick. We seem to be forever filming in the hope that we capture a moment that will make us famous. And we feel the need to document all that we do day in, day out in a blog. And there's some positives from this. The fact that we're forever filming has led to the capture of criminals who's been unwittingly filmed in the act and the filming of major incidents which uh, we've been able to analyze and learn from. Blogging has led us to greater understand 
uh, people's differences and sharing of information and ideas. But on a more negative side, constant filming has led to the erosion of people's privacy and to nasty crazes such as happy slapping. So society, I'm forever filming every moment in the hope that I capture something that will go viral and make me famous. The other day I was filming an air show and something went wrong. The plane crashed. Everyone was okay, thank goodness. The police took my video and it helped them find out exactly what happened. I had a great idea the other day and so decided to start a blog. I now have 500 followers and they have all thanked me for sharing my ideas with them. I feel like I'm making a difference to their lives. For your GCSE, you will also need to know about certain legislations that relate to computer science and technology. Um, so let's take a look at those laws. So the five major laws that concern computers that you need to be aware about are the Data Protection Act, the Computer Misuse Act, the Copyrights Design and Patents Act, the Creative Commons Licensing, and the Freedom of Information Act. So the Data Protection Act, with regards to computers holding so much personal information about people, it is really important that data is kept um, in a secure way and isn't passed on to people that have no right to see that data. Now the Data Protection Act is there to enforce that companies do look after your data and there's some really important um, parts to this law that you have to be aware about. So the eight principles of the Data Protection Act are that data must be used in a fair way, data must only be used for the role that it's intended for, data has to be relevant, you can't gather more than you need, data must be up to date, data must not be kept for longer than it's needed for, the person whom the data is about must be able to access the data if they wish, data must be kept safely and secure, and data must not be transferred without protection. So for example, it needs to be encrypted when the data is sent um, to another place. Now, recently, this law has been updated with the GDPR. Um, now, for your GCSE, the specification states that you need to have an understanding of the Data Protection Act 1998. So for now, this is what you need to be aware of. Now, the Computer Misuse Act is another law now, if you think about the fact that we are um, connected to lots of different um, people and organizations uh, with thanks to the internet, um, people can, can access sensitive data far more easily. Um, and the Computer Misuse Act was there to prevent sensitive data getting into the wrong hands and being edited and being destroyed. And the Act has three main laws. So you must not gain unauthorized access to a network, modify data on a network without permission, create and or supply malware. So any misuse of computer systems, um, if it's deemed um, illegal, it would be covered under the Computer Misuse Act. The Copyrights Design and Patent Act um, is there to protect people's ideas and um, their intellectual property. Now the World Wide Web contains lots of ideas and information in digital formats. It's very easy now for people to copy and share other people's works, ideas and files. And this law makes it illegal to copy and share other people's work, um, so their intellectual property, without acknowledgement and permission. The law doesn't just govern digital work as well, it covers written work, people's ideas as, um, in addition to that. Now, when it comes to illegal downloading, it's become very difficult to enforce the law due to the number of people who download uh, media without permission. Um, having said that, a number of torrent hosting sites have been prosecuted and shut down, but then they're just hosted on another site again in another country. So it has to be um, understood that this law is there to protect people and it's there to ensure that people, uh, people's intellectual property isn't stolen and shared. Um, but it's very, very difficult with the, the modern world, with the internet, with technology developing over, you know, very, very quickly. Um, it's very difficult to, to, to fully enforce in, in lots of situations. Now, the Creative Commons licensing. So there are times that owners of some intellectual property would like other people to be able to use, share and edit their work. And to enable this to occur without breach of copyright, the owners of some intellectual property can make their work available under the Creative Commons license. So when they do, they can choose exactly how people can use their work. So attribution, work can be copied, modified and shared, but the owner must be acknowledged. Uh, share alike, 
If work is modified, it can only be shared with the same license that the original piece of work had. Non-commercial, you cannot reuse the work for own profit and no derivative works. Can copy and share, but cannot modify. So they can promote their work under one or a mixture of these licenses. Freedom of Information Act. So this allows the public to gain access to public information held by public sector organisations. So basically organisations that are funded by the taxpayer. So the government, schools, the police, the NHS must all publish certain information on a regular basis. And it's in the interest of transparency. You know, we are paying thousands of pounds in tax every year. So therefore, we want to know, um, you know, what our money's been spent on. And this is a way of ensuring that they cannot hide, um, you know, public sector companies um, cannot hide that information from the general public. So the general public should also request, uh, can also request certain information, such as the contact details of all schools in England, for example. Information which cause, may cause harm to national security can, of course, be held back from the public view.